Hi there, I'm Tasha Smith. I'm Adam Lauchs. Today we're going to do some cooking activities with you, but first of all, we want to make sure that you guys know that we washed our hands, we got our gloves on, and we are ready. Yep. We are ready. So we're going to make some biscuits. Okay. And then we're going to turn our biscuits into pizzas. Oh, my so, favorite. Um, first thing we do when we're making biscuits is we start off with um, cold butter. Okay. Cold butter makes flaky biscuits, and we okay. really want the flakiest biscuits possible. That's okay. going to make our pizza crust super nice. Perfect. Okay, so we got two cups of flour already measured out in the bowl, and I'm going to have you do everything. Oh, okay. Because I've done it a million times okay. before, and you're going to do a lot better job than I will. So two cups of flour are going to go into the big bowl. So that's this. That's, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. That was awesome. Now we're going to use, this is called a pastry blender. It's got multiple lines on there. They're a little bit sharp. If you don't have a pastry blender at home, we have forks. Everybody should have forks. I recommend using the metal ones and not plastic ones because they're gonna break for us. Okay. We're gonna take our butter, we're gonna throw it in with our flour. So Good. this is our butter. All of this butter? That is one half a cup of diced up butter, ready to go. If, uh, if you don't have butter, you can use shortening as well. Uh, either way. And if you're going healthy and friendly and you want to do something that's totally crazy, uh, you can use avocados because they're a fat, they're a creamy fat. Avocado in replace of the and butter. In replace the butter. Oh, that's okay. right. It okay. gives a little greenish tint to our biscuits, but if you're trying to cut out all the extra saturated mm -hmm. fats in your diet, then the avocado is the way to go. Okay. Okay, so now we got our butter in. Um, we're going to take our forks or our pastry blender and we're just going to. We're gonna just kind of start mashing it all together. And, and while she's doing that, the butter's breaking up. They're turning into little bitty flakes of butter and they're incorporating with the flour all at the same time. I don't know if I'm doing this right. You're doing it, just okay. keep, keep going. You're doing fine. While she's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and add one half a teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of baking powder. Make sure you use baking powder here, not baking soda because the baking soda will leave a odd flavor in your biscuits. We put these off to the side. You obviously need to help. Is that why? No, I was just going to I was going to show how to use the forks at the same time. Okay. Uh, you take your forks and, and I use two forks or you can just use one fork and you're going to just kind of mush the butter in. You really want to avoid all the contact with your fingers in the butter because you want it to stay nice and cold and not melt. If it melts, you're gonna get a real sticky biscuit. So if you have one fork or if you have two forks, it makes it a little bit quicker. But you keep doing the same thing that you were doing. We're working that butter into the where there's really small, like half the size of a pea. You don't want big chunks of butter because you don't want that in your, in your pizza crust. So we're just about there. And switch tools with you. Okay. You scrape all your goodness off of the pastry blender. Is that fine? That's or perfect. Not? Okay. That's perfect. Now, what you want to do inside your bowl is make a little well, like a little volcano. So, in the pile all your flour up in the center. You can use the, yep. And then. I use my fingers and I make just a little bitty well. That good? Yep, that's beautiful. They need to poke the hole for the volcano. Maybe a little larger. And that's where you're gonna add your milk. You can use whole milk, half and half. The kind of milk you use doesn't really matter. If you don't have any milk, or if you have a dairy allergy, you could use water as well. So now we're gonna start stirring that all together. Start in the center and work your way out. Am I using this? Mm -hmm. Just kinda, of, yep, fold it all together. So it's gonna be kinda of dry and crumbly at first. You just gotta keep folding it together. You don't wanna automatically add in a whole bunch of liquids to it because then your, your dough is gonna fall apart. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna add a little liquid. Not much. Okay, I think you're gonna to have to jump in there with your hands and start balling it together. It's all going on the table in a minute. So I'm balling it together. Yep. It's going dry and crumbly still. That's like all the biscuits. What did I do wrong? Well, let me see. 
drop it in there. You didn't do anything. Oh, okay. You're being too gentle. Oh, okay. Now we got our ball of dough. Perfect. We're actually going to dump this out on the table. A little extra flour so it doesn't stick. Use one of those. Good to go. So you want to roll it out till it's about a half an inch thick. So you, you got to roll it, not really smush it. Let's try that again. <laughs> Oops. There you go. Keep doing it like that. A little flour on the top so it doesn't stick. Now turn your roller pin and go this way. This way? Like side to side, east and west. Good? Yep. So now we can take and we can cut out our little biscuits from here. Okay. And you can use a one cup measuring cup or a glass if you have a glass at the house. But you just make a little cut like that. Half inch thick. Perfect. And put them on the pan. Okay. Oh. Am I gonna cut them? Keep roll. going. And then we're gonna ball it up and cut it out again. So you're gonna be making biscuits for breakfast Saturday? Yep. I'm gonna be right on gonna it. Ball it uh -oh. up. And doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. Just ball it enough to so it sticks together. So you're gonna put our dough there, I'll grab the rest of the ingredients. So we got some onions. Some bell peppers, of course mozzarella cheese. It smells amazing. Parmesan cheese for garnish. Pepperoni, of course. There's some extra bell peppers in case we need more. Some garlic. And then I just got traditional in a can pasta sauce. Okay. And we're gonna doctor this up a little bit so it's not just traditional out of the can flavor. Okay. We're gonna give it a little bit of cutting board because you don't have to cut <laughs> okay. without cutting your fingers. So to get to this point I want to show you how to cut a bell pepper. Okay. And I got one bell pepper here and you know it's not a giant bell pepper but okay. we're going to take our bell pepper and I always start here at the top and I just make one slice straight down like that. Okay. So then you're gonna end up with four pieces that look about like that. No fingers. So am I still cutting right here? Am no, I you wanna turn one? it. There you go, turn it 90 degrees. Throw some math in there. Beautiful. <laughs> and for the last one, I like to lay the last one down oh, just so it doesn't you. slip. That's perfect. So I got a couple of extra of these okay. so you can practice. And we're gonna make large dice bell peppers. And to do that, I'm gonna make sure that your fingers are always tucked in. Yep. Make sure you're using a sharp knife. They're actually safer than a dull knife. And then you just work your way across the pepper. I'm gonna leave mine there so you can look at it. And those are gonna be yours. Uh-oh. you feel comfortable using a knife like that? Why am I using it wrong? You are. Oh. <laughs> so if you take the knife and you pinch it here okay. and wrap your fingers around it uh -huh. here, so you can see I have total control of that okay. knife. Okay. You're holding it like this and you're going to get a little wobble out of your That's knife. Not good. So if you pull up on the knife like that, okay. you don't have any wobble. It becomes an extension of your arm. Okay. So I want you to try it like that while you make these large dice.
This time I want you to try to keep the tip of your knife on the cutting board. And that one's yours, right? So keep the tip down as you cut. Okay. So that's <sighs> pepper cutting 101. Okay. I got an onion and a half here. I already cut half an onion, okay. so we would have it ready for our pizzas, but I thought I'd save you one. And then I was like, well, how do we get to this point right here? Right. Now it's common to see people take an onion and chop it right in half mm -hmm. and then start cutting it. And from a chef perspective, I think that's the wrong way to do it. So you just take the root off and you take the head off just a little bit. Okay. That's how I slice it for my hamburgers. Now where do we go with this? Compost bin? Yes, compost bin. Mm -hmm. Compost always. Living green. Then we're gonna cut it half. That uh, way. Okay. Okay. For hamburgers, you would turn it and peel it and slice it and everything yeah. else. So this traditionally is how we would cut the onion as a chef. You got to decide. See, that's the head of it, and the root was down here. You see how it, yep. it flows? Mm -hmm. So you want the root towards you, like this. You're gonna make two or three little cuts in there. Mm -hmm. Depending on the onion, two, three, four, maybe. And then you're gonna go across. But you notice I'm not cutting all the way through. Right. It's still holding together. That just makes it easier for me while I'm cutting. I'm not dealing with a whole bunch of little pieces. And then I'm gonna cut all the way through this direction. Ah. And I'm gonna turn it into small little dice onto the next thing. Yeah, my onions. So the last thing is garlic. <laughs> and you're gonna mince the garlic. The mince. We're gonna cut it just like that. You know these kids, they have to do it even for competition. Mm -hmm. They're mincing garlic. And then you're gonna squish it a little bit. And then you're gonna chop it a little more. And squish it. Pile it up. And you're gonna keep doing that until you have almost what, what looks like garlic paste. So we're gonna keep doing that until we got a nice pile, because I like garlic on my pizza. Do you like garlic? I love garlic. So, traditional pasta sauce in a can, nothing fancy. We're actually gonna put it on the stove and start cooking it. I'm gonna move this over here so we can see what's actually going on. Got our little portable burners here. We love these guys. So we're gonna heat that up for just a minute. Okay. Look, I got, I got some basil. Mm -hmm. You like basil? Yep. So we're gonna doctor it up with a little bit of basil. Now, I don't think there's any like true measurement for what you really need here. Okay. A little bit of basil. I like basil, so I put some basil. Some parsley. Okay. If you have fresh, use fresh. I thought maybe we would use what we probably have That's on perfect. the shelf. Perfect. This is oregano. Now I like it a little spicy. Okay. You like it spicy? A little mm -hmm. crushed red pepper? Yep. We're gonna take some of our garlic. And then of course a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. We're gonna stir all that together. When that gets up to a boil, all the um, Herbs that we put in there are all dehydrated. So we want to rehydrate them by boiling them and stirring it around. And then we're going to let it sit for just a little bit while we roll out our pizza doughs or our biscuit pizza doughs. And, and those flavors are going to start coming together as a whole. So I think we'll turn it off for now. Let it sit. Let it sit. And now the fun part begins. So we made these beautiful little biscuits. Time to turn them into pizzas for the kids. Super fast, super simple. I just used my fingers. I don't know if y'all could see that or not, but we'll do it again. I'm flattening it out. Um, you can leave it thick if y'all like the thicker crust pizza, but remember when you bake it, it's gonna poof up just a little bit. So you're gonna wanna get it probably as flat as you want to. These are super popular at, at my house with my girls when they were younger. Now, I don't always have time to make fresh biscuits at the house, do you? <laughs> no. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this. H-E-B brand, jumbo biscuits. I have gloves on, so I don't know if I can open them. We 
Wait for the pop. Did you jump? <laughs> so we can do essentially the same thing with these biscuits. We're gonna flatten them out. And this is where you cut your prep time in half. You don't have to, now you don't have to make biscuits. Okay, now we have a little bit of time for our marinara sauce to kind of hang out. Let the flavors all get together. So you're just gonna take a little bit. A little bit with these little miniature pizzas is gonna go a long way. So just a little bitty dab. Then you come back and swirl it around, kind of like that. So that was about a half of a two ounce scoop. So maybe one ounce of marinara sauce right there. And it covered four of those back in my dish. Oh, that was too much. It's okay. We'll call that one the Chicago style. Extra saucy. <laughs> now, if I were at home and my kids were doing this, I would, I would definitely let them do all the work just like this. They would have to switch between sauce and cheese and share, and, and then, you know, it usually turns into a big old sibling argument about what happened. Beautiful. Now I usually go in with just a little bit of cheese. Now, I love cheese. And so everything I make usually has too much cheese on there. But like I said, it's up to you. A couple of pepperonis. These are uh, thick cut pepperonis. Now what's neat about them is when they cook, they should actually make a little bitty cup. Mm -hmm. And all the juice from the pepperoni, the grease and the fat should catch in that little cup. And so when you bite into it, you're gonna get all those awesome pepperoni flavors. Perfect. Beautiful. Anything else we need to add? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so we're gonna put these in the oven. They're gonna take about eight to 10 minutes to cook. Huh? Mm. All right, here we are. We got our pizzas out of the oven. Now remember, they spent about 10 minutes in there sitting at 350 degrees. And we do have a convection oven, so the air swirls around in the oven a little bit better. For a conventional oven, I might raise the temperature up to about 375 okay. and put them in there and just let them go. Okay. Now remember I told you about the pepperonis? Mm -hmm. You see yeah. how they did a little uh -huh. cup yeah. and they got all the flavor of that pepperoni in yeah. there. So now is the time. See if our hard work was great. Okay. This this one here is a canned biscuit and this is one of our biscuits. Okay. Or vice versa. Can you tell? Yeah, this, this looks like one of ours. Okay, one of ours and that's, that's a can. can yeah. Well, if you can't tell the difference, then I guess we did our job right. This is a look fluffier for no reason. Mmm. So you're gonna have to sample both here. Really good. Now that's a canned biscuit, right? Mm -hmm. Big huge bite. It was good, but I think I like our biscuits Homemade better. Homemade better? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Homemade's always better. They're, they add stuff to the um, canned biscuits to make them shelf stable so they last longer in our refrigerator, okay. stuff like that. Some some of those chemically flavors that I can taste that some people can't taste. Mm -hmm. But uh, a homemade biscuit's always gonna be the way to go, of course. So good. <laughs>